Hello there folks, today we are starting with my top half of my top 100 and it's from number 50 to 41. I did my top 50 last year, uh, I'm not sure how many new games I've played, played since then but quite a few, quite a few, um, I'm sure maybe 100, maybe less. Anyway, I didn't want to do it last year but this year I thought like let's do the challenge, let's do top 100 and here you go. But yeah, these games are really, really cool, amazing games. Let's start with my number 50. So my number 50 is a bigger game. It's a very thrashy, or it has this kind of a hybrid feel to it. It has hero mechanics in it as well. And that's Merchants and Marauders. Now Merchants and Marauders is a game about piracy and trading and, you know, this Pirates in the Caribbean kind of a style of that. Um, I played video games before playing board games and I played the game or two or the series of games I think even or the different whatever I played the game about video game about the pirates where you go around um, the ports um, and then you're sailing uh, on the ship uh, through the sea and then you have sea battles then you are hunting for treasures looking for rumors uh, expanding your team and such so this has this feel but in a board game uh, it's amazing you can be uh, a merchant uh, just sailing around and uh, shipping goods from one port to the other and doing some missions rumors as well on the side uh, you can and you can basically load your ship with different stuff and uh, get your team uh, get your up upgrades and such really cool now uh, you can be a pirate uh, and you can hunt down the merchant ships and other players as well but there are those naval um, the country ships, uh, NPCs, the non-player ships, that will hunt you down once you become a pirate. And that's really cool. So that's how it was, at least um, in, in the video game or in the history as well, hopefully in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Anyway, a great, a great thing, a great story, a great game. Uh, it gives me that epic feel and I love the theme. They should have more of those games. This, this game just suffered from too many rules and then you need to remember all the rules once again and it's a little bit too long. If it would be streamlined, it would be just amazing. I would buy it again because we don't own this game anymore uh, due to its length, due to some, some problems. But I mean, it's still an amazing experience. I still love the game. If I would get the chance to play it somewhere, I would play it. That's Merchants and Marauders number 50. Number 49, now let's take another turn and let's go to lighter games and that's Insider. Now Insider is my favorite uh, party game, um, it seems to be, yes it is. Now in Insider um, you are playing as a group, uh, one, of, uh, one of you is playing the master and he knows the word that uh, you're trying to guess. And the other folks are playing commons but one of you is also an Insider. And you don't know who is the insider because you basically you close your eyes and then the insider opens his eyes and the master opens his eyes. So insider and master know about the words, but nobody knows who is insider. And then you ask the master questions uh, and the master asks us yes or no. And the role of insider is basically to, to, because he knows the words and you need to guess the word in order to get a chance to win. Uh, you want to push the other players in the direction of that word without revealing yourself. And um, then, if, let's say you guess the word. Now you can vote and think about who is the insider. Because if you vote out the insider, you will win. If you will not find the insider, only the insider will win. If you will not guess the words, everybody will lose. So it's kind of a... it's. A, traitor but he's cooperating with you he wants you to guess the word but he doesn't want you to guess him so it's it's so simple that the, the, bo the box is so small and you can carry it around anywhere you can just uh, hold those tiles with your uh, roll in your hand you just need a maybe a phone to track the track the timing the timer and that's it and it's it's amazing how simple uh, how simple components and yet how engaging how wonderful this game is we had a lot of blast playing with uh, different people and it's just an amazing experience that's insider number 49 my number 48 is a game from roxley games 
Uh, it got on our radar after we discovered a few other games from them. First of all, Steampunk Rally, of course, and uh, then one other game. <laughs> and then we discovered this third game, that's Super Mother Load. And the artwork of Super Mother Load isn't that engaging, but the theme is, is kind of cool. Uh, you're mining on a planet, uh, and the mechanics are tile placement and deck building. And the deck building aspect is really cool because uh, each one of you has his own deck of cards, uh, his own sort of a market of cards where you buy the, uh, the cards into your deck and uh, become better and better. And it has this kind of a vibe of deck builder, although it's a little bit bigger Euro game out there. And your, uh, the tile placement is basically you are digging f uh, you, the tunnels to get to, uh, to the riches, to the, uh, to the gems and to, to get to the artifacts as well. And then you basically score the points at the end of the game for your cards, for the deck building stuff, uh, for those uh, gems and such. And it's a nice touch on that digging tile placement, yet this kind of an extra to it is the deck builder and feels different, it feels unique somewhat, although the mechanics are every, uh, everyday used mechanics, you know. But I would definitely encourage you to take a look at Super Model Load, that's number 48. Number 47 is another game that we got uh, rid of recently um, due to its length and it, it was just hard to get it on the table, plus Alina wasn't so keen on playing this game. And that's Trikirian Legends of Illusion. Now it's still high on my list because I still adore this game. I would play this game is, if I would get a chance with the expansion. I would not play it without the expansion, but that was the thing that uh, with the expansion you have so many rules and if you teach it, teach it to a new gamer it's too much, a little bit too much. But I really like this kind of uh, action allocation uh, system right there, the worker placement and how thematic it is and how beautiful it is. Uh, you just, uh, you are uh, gathering uh, tricks and uh, resources into your workshop and then you're preparing those tricks and then you need to uh, put them, put the show um, you go, you go to the theater and then you put the show there. And the cool part is that basically you allocate the workers through cards, but you are doing this simultaneously. So uh, let's say you have those uh, worker spots on your player mat and then you have the card spots underneath. So you put the cards down and then you all reveal the card and see whoever goes where and some spots uh, become more expensive if you're not the first one to go there and you get better stuff out there. And the, the interesting yet uh, kind of hard part of that was that, um, so in order to prepare, for example, you need to get the trick. First you need to get the card, the trick itself. Then you need to go to the market to get the goods for that trick. Okay, you got the resources. Now you need to go and prepare the trick. So you will prepare the trick, you put the tokens on the trick because you have the resources. Then you need to go to the theater to prepare the, uh, the stage, to, to prepare the show, and then you will score the show. And it's a lot of that fuzz to get to, to those points, to the bigger points. And I do understand that some people might not like it. I did like it. I did how, like it how it feels real. It feels like, it's not like you just, uh, you grab this resource, get two points. Uh, why? Because you got two points, because it's a points out game or whatever, you know. But here you feel like you're doing stuff, you're preparing, you're in that theme of magicians, illusionists. So it's a theme about illusions. Anyway, Trikirian number 47, a heavy but a really cool game. Oh, by the way, uh, we played Anachron recently, so it's not on, our, on my list because I, as I told you, I made my list uh, in June. Uh, or at the beginning of June, so, but we played Anachrony only recently. And as we don't need to own that many heavy games, it would have replaced Rikirion anyway for me. So the, we played Anachrony only once, so I don't know yet, but Anachrony has a big chance to, to kind of a replace or, or be higher, much higher than, than Rikirion because it's more, a little bit more streamlined, more, a little bit more straightforward. But a great game as well. Anyway, Trikirion number 47. Number 46 is another worker placement game with that race element and that's Manhattan Project. And racing is not mean, I don't mean cars and you're driving and racing, no. I mean race to build to a certain amount of points and then you will win the game. 
And basically you are building atomic bombs. Cool theme, yay! I know, uh, it's really an engaging game because you have the main board, you have your own player board. At first you don't have much to do on your own player boards. But as you're grabbing more buildings from the main boards, you are basically filling the slots of buildings on your player board and then you can do the chain reactions right there. So I get the resources here, then I'll put the worker here to, to make these resources into uranium. So with uranium I build a bomb, here I can get the worker, here I can get uh, the money. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun there. And um, we have the expansions, uh, we played the expansion only once or twice. And no, the, the nations is really cool, everything else is it's fine, but you can play the base game as well. Although expansion just adds variability, I, I like the expansion. Um, now, the cool part is that you can put only one worker onto the main board and you can play, uh, put as many workers as you want on your player board. That's why you want to basically create your player board as, as kind of a machine. And so it's like an engine building right there as well. And it's raised to the 60 points uh, or 60 or whatever, how many points there, depending on the number of players. And th that's, that's just really, really cool. It was in my top 10 of all time, but New games come out and some, I like, the interest can change, the, the taste can change. I still like the game very much, but there is another game I'm going to talk about later. Anyway, uh, 46 Manhattan Project. Now, 45 is a card game, but it's a civilization building game, and that's Flow of History. Flow of History was recently on Kickstarter from TMG Games. They picked it up from Moideas Game Design, and... Basically, they will make the deluxified version of that. And that's cool, because we backed it. And the flow of history was made by Mo Ideas Game Design. We got it as a review copy, so we did a review for that game. So check out our review. But just to briefly tell you, it's a rather short for a civilization building game. And it's a card game, yet it's, it's engaging. It has those hero mechanics, it has smart mechanics, I, icons, uh, the use of icons, the use of different abilities. It has to take that element, but it's not as, as a, no, it's, it's not that bad. You don't feel that bad if you lose, although you can feel bad if you lose something. On the other hand, it's uh, not that hard to, to build up the defense against that. Just be smart, a little bit smarter. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so if you want to get a good experience out of a smaller box game, yet you want to get the civilization building uh, aspect in it as well, then Flow of History is so far one of the best civilization building games out there, in my opinion, because like nowadays playing the five or six player game uh, of civilization building, I'm not really into that. I would rather play the video game civilization on the computer. So, anyway, Flow of History, number 45. My number 44 is a game about thieves, uh, and it reminded me of Assassin's Creed when I looked at the box, and it's Age of Thieves. Uh, Age of Thieves is put out by Galactic Games, and I, I expected it to be a good game, but I didn't expect it to be a, that, that of good of a game, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, in Age of Thieves, you're trying to steal the gem, the precious, uh, uh, whatever, the king's gem, from the center of, of the board. And you have those guards guarding it around, and they move around, and they uh, uh, follow you if you're near them. Um, but you have uh, some tricks up your sleeve, and the other players are also thieves, and they're trying to do the same. And you can steal from each other, you can steal... Uh, from the boards and such. So you are going around as thieves, you are pulling out the tricks, and these are the cards. And there's a cool mechanism of um, that <clears throat> you're at the beginning, there's a phase where you're basically putting down the cards and putting some cubes on them. And this is kind of a, these are kind of a action points, initiative points. And uh, those cards which have the most uh, initiative points will trigger first and then the next most and then the next most and so on. So this is a cool mechanism. Uh, if you want to know more about it, we did a review for that game, Age of Thieves, so take a look uh, at uh, our review to get uh, to know more and a better opinion of that. But it's a really cool thing where, where you can win even by not stealing the, the, the emerald. And there is that pace to the game, because otherwise if you, steal, if you stall, if you be turtling a lot and like waiting for the best moment, the event deck can run out and you can all lose. 
and then when you get the gem the the uh, the alarm deck will occur which and um, there are four exits uh, on the board and only one exit will be open where you can go through and the other players can still still steal the gem from you the the emperor's gem you want to try to run out with it. if you run out with it you will win the game but you can also always win the game uh, also win the game by just stealing those smaller gems getting smaller points if you will run out and the one who was holding the emperor's gem will not run out so <laughs> So it's because at some point there's there's that pace because the gate will close at some point and you need, you need to get out. You need to get in, you need to get out. That's deeper. And you have those smoke bombs, you have those different mechanisms, like in Assassin's Creed. I don't know, it's just really cool feeling. Anyway, take a look at our review of Age of Thieves. That's a really cool game, number 44. Number 43 is a game that I overlooked on Kickstarter uh, because it was like a fantasy theme thing there. And it was like, oh, whatever, fantasy theme card game. Don't care. And then I was watching the Storage Wars. I uh, started watching the Storage Wars and I really liked the series. It was Canadian Storage Wars or whatever. Yeah, all the different Storage Wars. Where people are looking at the garage and then uh, they, they start auctioning. And whoever wins the, wins the garage will take a look in it and maybe he will find something really cool that he can sell for a higher price and get the money back and get, get even more, get the profits. That's the whole thing. It's like a gambling type of thing. And this game I want to talk about is Vault Wars, number 43. Vault Wars is like a storage wars, but set in a fantasy world where you're opening vaults and chests, whatever, you are gathering the artifacts and magical items, but you can also get the junk. And there's that uh, bluffing element where each player will get to be the, the auction master. He will know what's in the vault, and he will set the starting price. He cannot go further in the price, so he will set the starting price. And you can set a really high starting price, so the other players are like, huh, there's something really cool in the vault. But basically you're bluffing and there's only junk in the vault. Yes, you can lose money yourself, if you're not be careful. But, uh, I mean, like, <laughs> this, this element is just amazing, how, how people lie to each other. But I don't really like this. I don't really like bluffing games that much, and I don't really like lying to to people that much and backstabbing. But here it's made into this kind of a lighter experience, and that's why World Wars uh, is really high on my list, number forty-three. Number forty-two is a game we made a play for four, and that's Garden Dice. In Garden Dice, you are you are basically growing the vegetables, uh, and then you are watering them and such, and you can get the chain reaction, you can accidentally water the other players' uh, crops and vegetables, and they will get benefit from that. So you want to score the most points, and it's, it looks really cute, nice, and stylish. And it's all about this kind of a farming type, not really farming, but basically growing the vegetables, and there are some nasty things going on as well, and it's, um, it's based on dice as well. Uh, dice, dice as well. So uh, you are rolling dice, and that's where you can allocate your vegetables on the board. And the board is common for every player. So you're competing with each other, growing the vegetables there and watering them and such. So you have the birds as well that you can send on the seeds of another player and eat them. A little bit of take that as well, but overly a really cool, nice touch on that farming, growing vegetables, blah, blah. There, that's number 42, Garden Dice. Number 41, the last one on this list, on this video. Uh, is a game similar to the one I previously mentioned in this video, and that's Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Now, the thing is that Manhattan Project Energy Empire is a different game. Although it has some similarities to the original Manhattan Project, but the designers are different, the, the art is somewhat different, and it has more to it. It's, it's more euro -y. it's not a race to the points. It's, it's now Whoever gets the most points at the end of the game will win the game and you get the buildings, you are trying to not pollute the air too much with your infrastructure, with your constructions and not oil, get too much oil because you're drilling the mother earth and then you are polluting uh, it even more, the air and everything else. And uh, yeah, and you're trying to basically get the most points. It's hard to explain. It's kind of a basic worker placement Euro game, but there's also the same vibe of where you can put 
a one worker at the center of, of the board and then you can put as many as you want on your player boards, on your cards uh, and your player board. But uh, now they are color coded. So basically the thing is that if you go on the main board, if you go for a brown section of actions, and pick an action from there, then you can activate only brown cards from your own player board. And that's really cool. And, and there's no, there, there's that blocking thing, although there's not, like, you have workers, you have energy. You cannot send energy separately, but you can uh, use energy tokens, which are kind of a workers, but they're worker boosters, with the workers, actual workers. Because if somebody goes to a spot with one worker, you can go to that spot as well, but you need to have a bigger stack, at least consisting of two workers or workers and energy. And that's the cool part. So at some point you will just go with one worker and three energy, a total of four of that stack, to one location, So no, because you see that nobody else will spend five tokens on that spot. So you will basically block it from the others and get really cool benefit. Anyway, Manhattan Project Energy Empire is a really, really cool... Uh, Worker placement game, eventually it might replace Manhattan Project for us as well. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. They are somewhat different though. And that's it. That's it for, for this video. We'll see you in another one where we talk about 40 to 31. And we're getting closer and closer to my top 10 where Alina will join me and she will uh, comment on my games and disagree. As always, you know, her. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. See you another time. Bye bye.